Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. It is time to bake. Now I've got a lovely recipe for you. But not only in that, I've got Harrison back in the kitchen again, Harrison Ward. I uh, keep getting confused with Harrison Ford. <laughs> Never thought I would do until you said everyone mixes it up. So now it's always trying to do that. But Brilliant. welcome back to the kitchen. Good Thank to you. have you again. So we're going to bake something to take upon the fells today. Mm. And today's a little bit different because after I've done my recipe, I'm putting my feet up. I'm not cooking. I'm going to sit and watch and eat, which I'm quite excited about, if I'm honest. So we're going to bake some beautiful smoked bacon and smoked cheese scones to take. I'm a scone person. Are you a scone or scone? Scone. scone. Oh. Yes. Honestly, I'm surrounded by him. Scone. Well, I'm baking good, good scones. Scone. <laughs> I don't know whether, well, I don't know, I blame my mother, she taught me. Right, okay, so, we're gonna make some scones, all right? But first of all, we need to get our bacon nice and crispy. So I'm a smoked bacon fan, I don't know about you. Likewise, yeah, yeah. smoke's the best for Not me. Messing about with anything else. So let's get a chopping board out and put it where Emily wants me to put it. Is that correct? Told off last time? Yep. <laughs> Okay, so a bit of smoked bacon. We don't need much. Just want to get some flavour in there, really. I actually made these with chorizo as well, which was really Delicious. good. Yeah, so you could do it with either. It's a nice really? colour through the sky, I imagine, as well, with that. With that. Yeah, just bags of flavour. I'm more of a savoury scone person anyway. I don't know about you. Yeah, I love a cheese, especially with some mustard through there as well. I always yeah, love that sort nice. of flavour profile. Have you managed to bake scones out in the fells yet? I haven't tried them yet, actually, but um, I've baked a few bits out there before, some right. breads and some cakes and various bits. So I have got a, the, the, perhaps the, the mould I could use to go out there yeah, as well. Yeah. So maybe want to try at some point. I always think with scones, like the secret is hot oven, good hot oven, because you want a lift. Um, and then, you, you need to be able to, I never use a rolling pin with mine. I mm. always just compact them with, by hand. And I think you get a much better, much better scone. I actually made um, blueberry and, no, lemon and ginger beer scones, wasn't it? For the Queen's Jubilee. Delicious. And having that fizz of the ginger beer just gives you such a lift on your scones. And it's kind of changed the way I make scones. And I'll be honest, my recipe for making scones has been the same for 20, 27 years. Wow. It's never changed. It's Until always now. been reliable <laughs> and I'm changing. Well, sometimes change is good, isn't it? Oh, I love change. Absolutely love it. it. Scares the life out of you, Emily, doesn't it? What the sorry? Change. Yeah. Freaks you out, doesn't it, when I have to go, yeah. right, we've changed everything. <laughs> everything I've ever said, get rid. No. It's just, I think, from a, from a molecular point of view, which is not something I tend to get into, it just, instead of just adding an egg and a bit of milk, we're adding carbon dioxide mm -hmm. and flavour. And today I'm going to use a bit of beer from Wold Top Brewery. Have you been to Wold Top Brewery? Uh, I haven't back in the day, but I, I know sort of whereabouts it's from. Um, yeah, back, in my, back in my pub landlord days, I think we did have it on tap a couple of times. Oh, but, really? Uh, but yeah, I know the Wolds quite well. My auntie's that sort of way, so... Yeah, so lovely pub in South Dalton, I think, that serves well top part. Right? Okay, right. right. So this is a red beer. So you've obviously nowadays you get your IPAs, don't you? And then you get your golden ales, and then you get right at the other end you've got your darks and your porters. Well, right between golden and dark ales is the red beers. Mm. So they're a bit more golden, which generally means more flavour. Obviously, we're just using it for cooking, so the alcohol will burn, will cook out of the beer. It's not the alcohol I'm interested in, it's the flavour and the bubbles. So, while our bacon is cooking, I've got 500 grams of self-raising flour. Maybe for a little bit, Sorry, boss. <laughs> one day you'll listen. One day I'll learn, one day I'll listen, yeah. Butter, so this bar of the recipe is not dissimilar to what yeah. I've always done. And in my first cookbook, I put my scones in from the cafe from my cafe days, and I have had so many messages over the years of people saying, I use your recipe all the time, all the time, so maybe I shouldn't have messed with it, but I have. There we go. I have messed with it. Well, I'll use that one if I do try them in the fells then. You should try it. <laughs> I think, especially if you're in the fells, having that extra bit of lift from the, from the bubbles, and you could use ginger beer, you could use fizzy water if you mm. want to do it, it doesn't matter. 
I think some nice sort of forage bilberries could be quite nice in this time of yeah, year as well. Yeah, yeah, it'd be lovely. Yeah. Do you do you do much foraging while you're out or not? Not too much. I mean, I'm, I'm a self-taught cook, but I think being a self-taught forager is a bit of a different different step. I mean, there's some more <laughs> dangerous acts going at various bits, but for me, I think it's more little nettles, wild garlic, yeah. uh, bramble sort of thing, a bit of sorrel. That's about as far as I've gone really. Okay. I'd, lo I'd love to do more. I would love to sort of team up with someone and find out more about the mushrooms, even the game side of things as well. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, I. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd love that. Mushrooms scare the bleeding life out of me because I'm like, I love wild mushrooms. And I think last summer I saw my first sep in Winlatter. Mm -hmm. I didn't pick it. I, didn't, I wasn't going near it because I was so know, scared of it. Because I, from what I've heard, there's always a poisonous version yeah. of an edible one. So it was, I, I, I know exactly where it'll be when I go back this year. I took a picture of it and I was going to put it on social and thought, Please, somebody tell me if it's edible or not. But by the time somebody answered me, it was too late. And some of them just look as if they're not good to eat, do they? But they're the edible ones as well. I mean, it's difficult to Never know. Never the red think. ones. Exactly. I think <laughs> you've got, you've, someone's got to know what they're doing if you're going to uh, try that stuff. Well, I think the fact that one of your mushrooms is called a death cap, <laughs> that's telling you not to eat it. So that's one to that, avoid, isn't that it? That is one to avoid. Uh, mm. I wouldn't, even if I was told it was edible, I'm not eating a death cap. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> so, we let the bacon... I quite like to let it just catch a little bit, let the salt kind of draw it out because you're going to get good flavour in there. Now, what I have got for extra flavour, have you used this smoked rapeseed oil? I've not used a smoked one before, smell no. That. That's some lovely profile to that, isn't it? It's really good. Oh, it smoked smoke rapeseed. So, rapeseed oil is quite buttery anyway. Um, and then, obviously, what they've done is they've cold smoked it. So it's got this amazing, soft, round, smoky flavour to it. Now, I'm going to add a little bit into here, because if I add it into there, it's going to burn away and I'm going to lose yeah. it. Whereas if I just add it into here, I'm going to keep that flavour. Okay, so the bacon is crisping up really nice. You want it nice and crispy. If, you're not, if you've got any like, rashes of bacon from a Sunday cooked breakfast or anything, it's quite a good way to chop it all up. Um, and add that to your mix as well. So we've got our 500 grams of flour, 125 grams of butter, and a splash of smoked rapeseed oil. If you haven't got smoked the rapeseed oil, a bit of smoked paprika would be nice. That would work quite well. But to also reinforce the smoky flavour, we've got smoked cheddar going in. So it is all sort of smoky and lovely, and I like smoke flavour. Dried onion pack. Do you use this much on the fowls when you cook it? I do sometimes. It's quite good to sort of cut down the weight sometimes. It's proper it? old fashioned, yeah. but it works really well in dry stuff. I think it just gives you such a savoury hit. I mean, if you, it yeah, just, to me, it reminds me of being a kid and I've seen that. And then we're also going to enforce the onion flavour again with some chives. So I'm just going to snip them in because they're quite delicate herbs. I think for this, you can just chop them straight into your mixture and you're done. So what's been going on with the fell foodie then? I've been seeing you on Instagram, out and about doing your thing. I am, yeah, out and about, sort of in the hills there, cooking yeah. up the meals in, as, as we can. I mean, now we're getting the better weather, it's just getting out there and enjoying this beautiful part of the world that we're based in. But plenty of travelling around as well. I mean, we've got some trips right. that were down to sort of the Snowdonian Mountains and up to Scotland as well, okay. up there. So and touring you... it around. Do you prefer Cumbria or...? Cumbria's my home and I'm born yeah. and bred sort of this area, so I mean, I'm very proud of the area Carlisle I'm from. Way, That's I'm right, yeah, so further north. So again, coming back to this way, sort of the Lakeland turf is always... Mm. Um, Do you find the mountains, say, in Snowdonia or Scotland different much? Or? Absolutely. I mean, the geology side of things, I think, yeah. in the, sort of the stone and the rock, I mean, the Snowdonia is very sort of... Uh, um, harsh and sort of very rocky in points and some right. fantastic sort of dramatic scenes mm. whereas the lakes you've got half and half you've got some of the rolling sort of hills of the eastern fells and some of the yeah, more Yeah, see sort of I find up here a bit more rugged than South Lakes Yeah South Lakes tends to be a bit gentler I think Absolutely maybe um, apart from that Coniston maybe it's sort of a bit of a Yeah, yeah, that's a bit, that, yeah but, but certainly compared to the Peak District or something where it's very much yeah, a bit like a beginner's lake I would Baby find Baby hills aren't they in the <laughs> Peak District oh, Sorry Right, okay, so I've got smoked cheese, chives, I've got onion powder in here. We'll have a little bit of salt and pepper, really important to season savoury scones. The amount of time that I have been out in a cafe and I've had sweet scones with cheese in, it's mm. just bizarre. Um, yoghurt. So we're going to add a little bit of yoghurt, and the reason why we're doing that 
is it reacts, the acidity of yoghurt will react with the rays in the self-raising flour. Mm. If you only add beer, it doesn't rise and react as much, okay? So in with a bit of the beer to start with. Now, if, if you totally didn't want to use beer at all, you could use sparkling water if you want. Um, or you could go back to the original and just do egg and uh, milk if you want to. But I think this really works well. And the key to making really good scones is not to overmix and certainly not to over shape them mm. after you've mixed the dough together. So you, I noticed, was it this year or last year, you were out with the old Mary Berry, weren't you? I was, yeah. I was lucky to be invited on one of her, one of her shows. It was, was a, a good experience? It was fantastic, yeah. And she was just as you expect. I mean, she was lovely, really sort of a old school mannerisms, that sort of way. Yeah. And, and very flirty as well, actually, she was. Was <laughs> she? I had my shorts on and she kept uh, commenting on the old legs a few times, but... We had a great day out in the fells, the northern fells, and it was a uh, right. Made what, a wonderful piece that aired in December. Once the beer is in, and we've kind of we've got quite a soft dough, but we've not really brought it together. Let's add the crispy bits of bacon. Get those in, because then you're going to get those really nice sort of little salty bits. And then just press it together. You don't want to put your bacon in too hot, okay? Cook it, let it cool down a little bit, and then you have got it, okay? Now, if you fancy making these yourself and you want the recipe, scan the QR code along the bottom. That will take you to masterclass.co. That is the website of my sponsors who help me make this program every week for you to watch. So go check out their equipment. Everything that I use in my kitchen comes from Masterclass. So it gives me loads and loads of great equipment to be able to cook both in the kitchen and actually I've taken plenty of stuff out before and cooked out in the garden or out on the fells as well. So hopefully we will get out soon once I've made these. So no rolling pin with scones, all right? If I catch you with a rolling pin, I'm gonna come down that camera and have you, all right? So you, what you do is you press down and in. You do not use a rolling pin because if you do, you're gonna roll all the air out. That beer and all the bubbles in there are working to rise and really help with the lift, okay? But you've got to compact your dough rather than um, roll it out, okay? So it's in like that, down like that. Right, so let's grab a tray. So we've got our masterclass. So this is uh, smart ceramic, okay? So these are super non-stick, really, really good. Now, if you do want to win a competition to win some bakeware like this, comment, like, and share on this video. That will enter you into a competition. I will draw the winner next week randomly, and I will message you direct on Facebook Messenger, let you know you've won. You can send us your address, and the lovely people at Masterclass will send you some bakeware like this. So it is definitely worth commenting, liking, and sharing. Did I get that right, Carlos? Yes, it is. Good. Thank you. Tells me off if I don't get it right. Okay, so cutter, dip it into the flour. Really important, first cuts. Mm. As Rod Stewart said, the first <laughs> cut. <laughs> my mind went the I'm same sure way. Showing my right? age there. So first cuts will always give you the best rise. Okay. Once you start second rolling all the bits and bobs together, you never get as nice a rise. Mm. Never. So you've got to get your optimum yield from your first press. Sounds technical, I don't know. It's about as technical as I get. Okay. Now these bits, these are our, this is our second press, so it will never be as good as those. It'll still be all right. Press it down, and then in we go. See how many more we can get. We should get another one more out of these. So my plan was to make these so we can take them out on the fells. What do you reckon? Sounds delicious to we'll me. We'll serve them up. Now I've got a little chutney I'm going to make in a second. But first of all, we'll just egg wash these. Now, I like to just use the yolk on these, all right? So I will just separate this out because you get a really nice, distinct golden glaze on this. So just the yolk. Yeah. Perfect. Think yep. And then just a little bit 
I've duck eggs. Do you cook with duck eggs? Very I often? have them before. Oh, yeah, they're amazing. They rich with. those yolks as well. Yeah, yeah, really good. I love nothing more than pulling up next to the end of a farm gate and find. It sounds like proper country bumpkin yeah. stuff, but it happens up here. You can buy eggs from a farm. Yeah, when you, you see that sign, you just slam yeah. the brakes on, don't you? That's it. Duck eggs. Yeah, it's brilliant. I'm always buying them. My brother's got lo my brother's got loads of ducks. He's got like a pond with full of ducks, and he's like, he's got more duck eggs than that any one man <laughs> needs. It's ridiculous. But they are really good for baking with and beautiful glazes and stuff. So the key to scones is having a really good high heat. I've got my oven on 195 degrees, so we're going to get a good lift, okay, which is what we want. And they will already be rising because of the beer that's gone in these, but they're going to go in for about 15, 20 minutes till they're really lovely and golden. They will be made. While these bake, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple chutney using red onions, prunes, and a bit of cider. Right, the weather has not been too kind to us, but we are here, we're out on the fells. This is where you, you're on your happy place here, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. This is, this is for me, even in this sort of weather, it's fine. Getting cooking out here, I think it's a great place to be. Different sort of taste of the food being outdoors as well. Oh, we're gonna cook something better. up. Food is always better outside and you've got a little kit here. Now, I promised you something, we baked those lovely scones. <laughs> I'm gonna make you one while you get started. Lovely. But tell us what you're cooking. So I've got a chicken gumbo dish I'm going to do. A um, okay. sort of chimichurri sauce is going to go over the top. Oh, I love chimichurri. Um, yeah, so really nice sort of fresh, zesty flavours in there as well. Um, and again, that's sort of that sort of Louisiana sort of Creole type spices right. through this dish. So again, nice. quite a nice one for the camp stove. Again, just a single burner. So again, one heat source on this. So um, should cook quite nicely. A little side wind, but shouldn't affect us too much <laughs> in there. And um, yeah, this we'll is the Lake District. Absolutely, we're used to it in these parts, aren't yeah, we? But, yeah. I guess we'll get started. Go for it. I'm just going to make this scone up for you. Wonderful. So we'll get started on the chimichurri first then. So I've got a bit of onion going in this. I'm going to use the same onion for both the chimichurri yep. and the gumbo. Thank you, sir. I'll just get this yeah, chucked yeah, up. I'll scoff at that within a second. Get some work done, Harrison. <laughs> I actually get to sit and, and not cook, which is quite strange for me. You can relax after this, after this morning. Yeah, definitely so. So we're grand. I mean, we've got some fantastic vistas here, haven't we? So real panoramic views. and This is one of... When we first moved here, when we built the house, we didn't even know. I've lived here since 2003, and I didn't really know this existed. Yeah. And we haven't really explored St. John's in the Vale much. And then once we moved here, it was like up here every night in the summer with the kids. I've been up here with Kerry and the dogs. Um, I've been up here loads. I mean, the dog will just fly into that tarn unless she loves it. <laughs> you ever got in yourself, Peter? A little swim in there, Not a little yet. dip? No? The lakes and swimming is not for me. I quite like a little dip every now and again. The kids were on the paddle boards yesterday in Allswater and loving it, but it was cold. It will Too be, cold yeah. for me. It should be warming up soon for the summer, though. You get out there, it's uh, no, it never nice warms cool up. off. No, <laughs> it's never warm. OK, so I'm just going to quite finely dice this onion then to go for the chimichurri again. Not too much sharpness in there. Again, the vinegar and stuff will just uh, null that down slightly. Yeah. A bit like on the sort of previous episode you did with that sort of little bit on the flatbread there. Again, yeah, we're not yeah, getting yeah. too much sharpness through that onion. Yeah, so. I love pickling stuff, particularly with with acid, with um, lemon juices and 
lime juices and things like that, but chimichurri with vinegar is, yeah, I love it. Yeah, love fantastic drizzle on a steak and stuff, isn't it? Really nice, yeah. but obviously slightly different sort of cuisines, this with the gumbo and the sort of more South American chimichurri, but I think yeah. it will go quite nice again as a little sort of drizzle finish off on there. I don't think I've had a gumbo before. I don't think I have. So again, oh, usually they're more sort of, yeah, sort of shrimp, shrimp through there, aren't they? And a little yeah, bit of sausage yeah. again. I'd usually like to use sort of like a smoked sausage or like kielbasa sort of through this generally, yeah. but unfortunately being in Cumbria, it's difficult to source these products sometimes, <laughs> even in sort of the local supermarket booze we've got down the road. So we're actually going to replace this with sort of chorizo through this, yeah, a little yeah. bit different, but again, it'll still add that smoky flavour there, some nice sort of paprika yeah. through it as well. Again, those Creole flavours. So onion through there again. So I've got some coriander here and some parsley. Again, finally chop some of this up to go through the sauce there. So again, lots of freshness going through this as well. So again, it's important where possible, sort of in the outdoors as well, trying to leave the place exactly how you found it. Again, there can be yeah, quite a, yeah. obviously a lot of um, rubbish you bring up there, bits of packaging you, you bring up with you. Um, but just leaving that place again, using the camp stove, so it's risen off the ground instead of those sort of scorched fires, even those disposable barbecues mm. that sometimes we, we unfortunately see marking the ground on here. So I always try to basically leave the place exactly as it was, if not better, mm. uh, when I'm out there. Okay, so we'll just coarsely chop some of this fresh herbage up then. Do your knees not hurt cooking down there? <laughs> they tend to My this knees are hurting watching. They can go to sleep a bit after <laughs> yeah. a while. I mean, there has been a couple of moments where I might have gone head first into the camp stove when I get up, but mm. it's uh, generally I'm okay down here. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it is something that just seems to change the blood flow, I think, as you, <laughs> as you do go a little bit uh, older through the years. I mean, once upon a time, you used to be sitting on your knees in front of the television as a kid, yeah, yeah. just for hours, and it wouldn't bother you, but yeah, yeah it can be now. But again, it's nice to be close to the surface there as well. Again, I don't know about you, I mean, you've obviously seen when, you, when you're cooking on the... Um, on the stages or in the mm. studio sort of kitchen and things but again having the chopping board being sat down and chopping is quite a difficult act it's to do yeah so yeah it's stood up's fine I think on the floor yeah. is better too so yeah well the weather really has kicked in now <laughs> okay so we chopped that fresh herbage up there again we've got the onion through there as well a bit of sort of chili through this as well um you can use green chili if you like but i like the bit of red for the color yeah, in there yeah, so yeah. that's quite nice so Bit of that's there. So I'll go I always find green chilli quite aggressive. Hmm. I think red chilli is a sort of milder, sweeter heat, especially if you're going to eat it raw. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, do you like things hot or? I don't mind a bit of heat. I'm not like I won't eat a hot curry. Yeah. I'm not really interested in that. I don't mind. I sometimes think it's a bit of a bravado for no reason, isn't it? Yeah. When these really hot curries. I mean, just going to pay for it, aren't you? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. I see these people like ghost eating ghost chilies and stuff for fun and I'm like there's just no fun in that. I'll leave them to it I think yeah. yeah absolutely no not for me I don't mind a bit of heat but uh generally just as long as it doesn't affect the flavours too much. I think enough to know it's there. Yeah. Look the sun's coming out. Loving the studio now aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the red chilli all chopped up then as well. And then we'll get two garlic cloves through there as well. Nice Ooh, bit of garlic. Two. Yeah, we'll like a bit in there. Nice and sharpness again. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite good at actually not. <laughs> Everyone thinks I wouldn't be very good at sitting back and letting someone else cook, but I'm actually quite good at it. Like nobody invites us for dinner. And I, I never get invited to dinner <laughs> anywhere. I know. Full of pressure, and, aren't they? And the very few times that I get invited, I end up cooking. <laughs> I do. I always end up cooking. Oh, you look at them and go, you're not doing that like you do that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, so we've got the garlic in now then as well. So I've got in here a little bit of sort of uh, olive oil and sort of cider vinegar in this one. Yep. So again, you use your white wine vinegar as well, but quite like the flavour of that sort of profile. It's one I had in the house, so I've gone with that one. I'm trying to count things down and I'm out and about as well into little containers. So again, it saves that sort of weight what you carry. Yeah, yeah. I find sort of old sort of toiletry bottles work really well. These little plastic sort of containers. Um, if you are someone who drinks alcohol, the little miniature bottles can work quite well for dressings, oils, yeah, yeah, bits yeah. like that. And again, little tubs, little screw top tubs in here. I mean, these are old hair gel pots that I use. Wash them out, reuse, recycle. Great screw top lids for little uh, spices yeah, and seasonings. It's cycling, isn't it? It's Absolutely. Absolutely. Helps. 
situation. <laughs> do you want me to do it? <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> okay, so we're going with this olive oil and vinegar. See how we're doing with that. We'll just keep it stir free. We want it quite loose on the uh, sauce at the end, so bring in some seasoning in there as well. So self-taught cook, yeah? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So it was just something from a, a very young age, really. Mm. Sort of again with my with my grandmother in her kitchen there, put to work and. Again, just something that really, really loved all the, the aspects to it and the fact that everyone got around the table on a Sunday as they used mm. to. Perhaps not so much anymore now. Yeah, pulling the kids away sometimes can be mm. quite difficult. Getting them around the table, but loved that aspect of it. And when I really started to watch a lot of programmes on the telly, reading sort of cookbooks on there and just trying different flavours from all around the world, yeah. it just really sung to me. And sometimes too much. I mean, it sometimes uh, gets packed on it's a bit balance, as well. <laughs> Absolutely, but I find that sort of the fell walking these days can... Uh, alleviate some of that yeah, calorie yeah. In, in. They do say, don't they, that actually walking incline is probably the best thing for you, isn't it? Absolutely. Like That's running so can take its toll on your knees and your hips and stuff like that. Whereas walking and walking up, they say, is like the, that and cycling is supposed to be the best things for you, isn't it? Slow, steady sort of heart rate sort of stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely out there. And it's a, a great practice too, and just be able to enjoy the, the views while you're out as well. Yeah. It's, so important, I think, for physical and for mental well-being, really. Do you feel better when you've been out and cooked on the fell? Undoubtedly, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Do you I think sleep it's... better? Um, I've always I... slept well. Oh, yeah. Always slept well, to be honest. Right, fair enough. <laughs> sleep anywhere, I think. Standing up, me. So we've got it with the chicken in there, and we get a bit of colour of that, just cook that through yep. slightly. And then uh, in the meantime, while that's cooking off, I'm all prepped and all chopped up with the uh, the peppers, the onion, the celery, and the garlic there. So um, it's a bit like the sort of Louisiana yeah, trin yeah, trinity yeah. there, the, yeah. uh, the green bell pepper and the uh, celery and onion. Um, we've got some chorizo going through, like we mentioned before. Yeah. But otherwise, I'm going to enjoy this uh, this lovely scone you've prepared, Peter. So Go for it. Looks, Go uh, for looks it. delicious. So what was in this chutney again? So it is uh, red onions, prunes, sugar and cider and a bit of vinegar as well just to go with the smoked bacon cheddar mm. and chard scones really super easy and the good thing about it is once you've made it it sits in the cupboard sorry it sits in the fridge for ages you can whip it out into sort of cheese sandwiches but you can stir it in with sausages and uh, so you get all that sort of sweet tangy sticky sausages really good um if you spread it on like a flatbread and crumble feta over it it's really mm. nice mm. Really, you get that sort of sweet and sour thing going on so it's quite good to have in your fridge whenever you want it. And particularly like with you, when you're cooking outside, take that, all the work's done. Yeah. There's not a lot else you need to do. Chuck a few sausages in, bit of chicken, pork, whatever. So yeah. Delicious. Well, I can eat about three of those, I reckon. That's Very nice. Go for it. So chicken just browning off, yeah? Mm. Have you cooked this out and about before? Is this a dish you've done before? Or? I've done this one once. Yeah. Um, not with a sort of dressing on the top. But I was up um, up in the Langdales in this one, I think. Up sort of there, looking over um, the three peaks there on Sickle Tarn. Yeah. So a group of four of us. Nice gumbo. Again, goes quite well this sort of time of year as well, I think, sort of being out there. Again, when the climate's a bit more like yeah, yeah. perhaps Louisiana or uh, the Creole. Okay, so we cook that chicken off then. So a little bit more oil, just refresh that pan. I'm going with some of this chorizo sausage. And then in with the uh, Louisiana Trinity, the Creole flavors. I do like chorizo. It's just had so much flavour to stuff. It's lovely colour and smells too, mm. isn't it? I mean, it's just that way it permeates that oil as well. It's, it's lovely in a paella, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our Spanish friend has a bit of a problem with us putting chorizo <laughs> in a paella. You know you love it. one of these dishes I feel like you need to just get everything in the pan and then just sit back and enjoy the view isn't it really? Right then that's cooked through them with that sort of uh, 
So essentially, you've cooked off the chicken, you've cooked off the vegetables with the chorizo, and yep. then you're going to whip that out of the pan now, yeah? Absolutely. So we'll get that off there, and we're going to do a bit of a roux in the pan. Yeah. Um, some flour through there, a bit more oil, and then add some of these sort of Louisiana Cajun style spices. Okay. So we've got some chili powder through there, we've got some cumin, a bit of dried basil in there as well, and then we've also got some um, paprika. Right. So there's bags of flavour still in that pan, isn't there? Absolutely. So it's yeah, all one, yeah. one pan dish. So again, we're just putting those yep. flavours through it once again, yeah. not losing those. Just building the dish up slowly with all these different flavour profiles. A bit more hair wax, yeah? A bit more hair wax, yeah, we're going there, the secret recipe, that on the outdoors. Is that just plain flour? Yep, just plain yeah. flour in there. Just combine that off. Yeah. More oil. Okay, so that's browned off a little bit now, that sort of flour and all mixed there with the flavours we already had in the pan. Mm. So we're going to go with some of these spices now. So we've got a couple of bay leaves in there as well. Yeah. And then a bit of this spice mix that I mentioned before. We'll just cook that through before adding the other components back to the pan. So that's all the spices cooked out, yeah? Yeah, we cooked those out in the pan, and I'm going to go back in now with the chicken okay. and this veg and ceviche mix that we had before, and nice. then just slowly adding some chicken stock and bring it all together. Nice, here you go. Thank you very much. Piper in hot again, so packing these in a flask sometimes before heading yeah. out just keeps that stock nice and hot first, yeah, saves yeah. us heating it up. Again, already battling the wind sometimes and the elements when you're outdoors. So. Yeah, yeah. Little tips and little cuts, shortcuts. Makes it easier, doesn't it? I think, and I think you, these are the lessons you learn when you cook outside more, don't you? You kind of like, oh well, if I do it that way, it makes things easier. Absolutely. And you can even take a nice little sort of soup for a starter up in there as well. I mean, this one's quite a quite a liquid based sort of yeah, dish anyway, yeah. but that could be quite nice too. And I found sometimes even taking up perhaps like um, pre sort of scrambled eggs in there can be great for an omelet quick on the go. Mm. Pancake mix if you are camping out straight in the morning, pour straight in the pan. Nice. And a flask is great for keeping things hot, but will also keep things cold as well. So yeah, that can be yeah. quite a handy little tip for various Well, bits. I noticed with the, the raw chicken you had earlier, you had some frozen peas underneath it. <laughs> keep everything cool. That's I, a great idea. I did, yeah. I was hopefully for some ice cubes this morning, but uh, I didn't have any I could uh, grab out the freezer. So yeah. we used uh, something else. So what? So obviously, um, you're on Instagram loads, aren't you? You're very active on Instagram. What's your um, Instagram account? Yep, so that's my main platform. So I'm on all sorts of social platforms out and yeah. about there. But yeah, it's just Fell Foodie generally. Right. So you can find me there, all on word. Yeah. Um, obviously, love of the fells here in the lakes and a bit of a foodie. So yeah. it seemed a suitable pseudonym to choose when um, going very out good. and about. No, I've, I've, well, I follow you and I see plenty of what you're up to. I know you're, you're heavy on your stories, aren't you? You get... Yeah, yeah tell, quite a bit there. tell your stories day by day quite a lot, don't you? Yeah, well, again, still sharing sort of where I've come from, sort of the journey I've been mm. through that battle. I still talk about, I guess, the whole mental health and battle yeah. of alcoholism I had in the past. Mm. Um, sharing that out there, quite raw and honest, but also sharing this sort of love of cooking outdoors in the fells as well mm. in uh, the home county of Cumbria. So it's, um, yeah, it's been. Do you get a over nice onto journey. the coast and do much cooking? I've been to some spots in sort of uh, White Table. We used to go to Silliff quite a lot as kids. Yeah. I mean, that was, a, that was always a family destination yeah, for yeah, some holidays yeah. there. Um, but again, St. Bees, where I've been, some lovely coastal spots there, the cliff yeah, edge. Yeah. And you've got those hidden sort of quite secret beaches at Arnside, haven't you, that people yeah, haven't really yeah. um, fully come on board with yet. But a fantastic coastline in Cumbria too. It's very untouched as well, mm. isn't it? There isn't many people over there. Okay, I think we're about there then. So, right around the place. Good. Smells really good. It should be there, yeah. Sorry. I'm not sure I knew this morning when I got up, I thought I'm going to be eating gumbo on top of a fell. <laughs> I like it. Well, here we are, and the skies have come out for us as well. It's Well, with complete honesty, we've had rain, wind, sunshine, you name it. Nice.
and then a bit of the sort of the chimichurri over the top. So we've certainly got a nice bit of heat to this sort of that's uh, heat from the south, as yeah, it would be in the gumbo yeah. there, with all the spices for it as well. So no, it looks good. Look forward to trying this. Okay, and we've got a little bit of a uh, stick for mopping up at the end there. So thank you very much. Please enjoy. Am I allowed to eat? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's delicious. It's got some good flavour in there, isn't it? Mm, really nice. Plenty of heat as well. <laughs> I like that. Do you know what? Tomorrow, this is going to be even better, isn't mm. it? It's one of those dishes that make more than you need because it will freeze beautifully, won't it? And it, it will. will keep. But if you put it in the fridge tomorrow, that will be like even better in flavour. But that is absolutely delicious. Okay. Harrison, thank you so much for coming and cooking. It's been really enjoyable just kind of walking up onto the fell with you, having a good old chat and, and watching you cook. But thank you very much. Please make, tell them as well, anybody who wants to see more of what you're doing, please let our viewers know where's best to find you and you know if we can have the recipe and post that on the website that would Absolutely. be amazing we will get the recipe written up emily will photograph it beautifully i'm sure um and you'll be able to get it on masterclass.co but i will speak to harrison later and get that recipe for you where's best to get you yep so you can find me all on all the social media platforms um instagram twitter facebook at fell foodie or my website www.fellfoodie.co.uk brilliant but thank thanks you very much, much for having me cheers